Welcome to Hannah Universe, where we do Hannah things. I am very excited about today's challenge because it comes from one of my favorite types of food, Italian food. Now, everybody can make spaghetti, and I can make a pretty mean lasagna, I'm not gonna lie to you. But we're gonna set aside our pasta noodles today and move on to the better portion of the meal, the dessert. I love cooking dessert because I absolutely love sweets. I have a very bad sweet tooth, and I am always a little bit intimidated by Italian desserts because whenever you think of Italian desserts, you immediately go cannoli, or what today's challenge is, tiramisu. When you first think of Italian desserts, you immediately think cannoli, or what today's challenge is, tiramisu. The tiramisu has always seemed very intimidating to me because it is delicately layered in this beautiful cream and it's just got this beautiful topping of cocoa on top. It looks like it takes years to master and you have to have a culinary to degree to even attempt it. Now obviously I don't have a culinary degree and to be honest I am just okay at cooking. I'm not the best. but. I'm very excited to get this challenge going. I have made this one time before, and I didn't fail. I'm very optimistic about today's challenge. It should go okay, and it should taste okay. So we're gonna get into the ingredients that we need. We are gonna go to the grocery store together, go buy all the things that we need, and then we're gonna attempt this bad boy. Let's get to it. Today's recipe is a little bit more of a simplified version of a tiramisu. There are some recipes out there that get crazy in depth, and have tons of really crazy ingredients. And I felt like the recipe that I chose today was something I could manage, it's something I could get all the ingredients for, and it was pretty easy to tackle. So I did find it on Pinterest, and I will leave the link in the description below to that recipe if you wanna give it a try. But it is eight simple ingredients, and a lot of it is stuff that you're already gonna have at your house, like sugar and eggs. So we are gonna go to the grocery store, we're gonna go shopping for all the things that we need because I don't have everything. I don't have lady fingers or mascarpone cheese. So we're gonna go pick up some of that stuff, see how much it's gonna cost us for just the few things that I need and also how much it would cost you if you needed to buy every single thing on the list today. Let's go into the grocery store and have some fun. So this recipe doesn't have a ton of ingredients. We do need a few things though. So we need six eggs, one cup of sugar, some mascarpone cheese, heavy whipping cream, lady fingers, espresso coffee. Um, there is an option for some coffee flavored liqueur, but it is optional and just the last time I made it, I didn't do the liqueur in it. We aren't really drinkers, so we don't, I didn't want to have all that extra at house and us never use it. And then last thing is some cocoa for dusting. So pretty simple ingredients list. The first thing I'm gonna grab though is the mascarpone cheese. So the last time I made this, the mascarpone cheese was actually really hard to find. I walked through every single like dairy cooler that I could think of. I went through the cheese section. I went everywhere trying to look for it. And at this particular store and at Walmart too, it was over in the deli section with like all the fancy cheeses. So here is what we need. We actually annoyingly need two of them because we need one and a half. So it is a bummer. I'll have to find another recipe to use the rest of the mascarpone with, but um, we'll just make another one, right? Just two tiramisus, why not? But these are gonna be $5.99 a piece. So these are the most expensive piece of the recipe. The rest of it's pretty, pretty cheap. Next, we're gonna grab some heavy whipping cream because we get to make handmade whipped cream. Looks like our recipe calls for one and a th three fourths cups of whipping cream. So, one of these should do it. Mmm, these look delicious. Sometimes they have a tiramisu cake here, but it doesn't look like they have one today. That'd have been funny. It's all right, we're making our own. 
Okay, next thing that I'm gonna grab is the eggs. And Fry's is having a big sale, I guess, right now on eggs. The um, 18 count are $1.99, whereas the regular 12 count is $1.39. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these, but I'm gonna only calculate for the $1.39 since you don't need the 18 count eggs. We just are out of eggs at home. So we'll grab this baby. I mean, the recipe calls for six of them, so you're gonna end up using half that carton anyway. The next bit's a little bit trickier because the recipe does call for super fine sugar and the current store that I am at does not have super fine sugar or baking sugar. Um, but the last time I made the recipe, I just did regular granulated sugar, so. I actually do have this at home, but I wanted to check the price to see if maybe if you have to purchase it, for the grand total of the recipe. It's $1.99 right now. While you are picking up your sugar, you can swing over to the other side of the baking aisle and grab your cocoa. Maybe. Where's the cocoa? Chocolate, baking chocolate, and cocoa. Here we go. $3.49 for the cheap stuff. Get some Hershey's up in here, some $4.29, and then some organic for $5.49. I already have cocoa at home, so I'm gonna skip the 369 this time, but I'm gonna add it to our grand tally. So three, 369 is going on the list. All right, the next bit is something that we can get a little bit more creative with. I am in the delicious, wonderful smelling coffee aisle. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little intimidated. This aisle is huge. But we are looking specifically for espresso coffee, which there isn't a ton of options in here. A lot of this is just like your basic, which brand do you like, what roast do you like, what flavors do you want in it? But that could bring up a very interesting conversation. Me personally, I am omitting the liqueur in the recipe, so the liqueur is gonna add a lot of flavor to it that um, I'm not adding, so I think could be fun to add a little bit of flavor in the coffee. Maybe you could do like a French vanilla, you could do a hazelnut, you could just, you know, get crazy with it. The last time I did the recipe, I did like this, um, it was like a Hawaiian roast, I think it was called. It had like kind of notes of florally tastes in it and uh, it was really good with it. So I think it'd be really fun to go crazy, just do something good. But. For our tally today, I'm gonna look at some espressos. This is really honestly the only one I found that doesn't require like an espresso machine or something. So I'm gonna add a whopping $7.99 to our, our tally for our price list today. But of course, you know, you're not gonna use that whole bag and you're gonna have tons of espresso left over if you're an espresso kind of person. $7.99 is going on the list, but I already have some coffee at home, so we're not gonna be buying that for me today. One thing that is actually very tricky to find on this recipe is our next thing on the list, the lady fingers. They are relatively inexpensive and very difficult to find because not a lot of grocery stores do carry them. And I came to this specific grocery store in town because I knew that they carried them, even the other locations of this same exact chain don't carry them. They're just not a very common thing. Really, people only use them for this recipe. But um, these are the, like, they are like harder and um, come in this big pack here for $2.99. There's a couple of different brands, but I know that this one is one of the more popular ones. And uh, they turn out really good with the recipe, so. There are a couple of substitutes. If you cannot find lady fingers in your area, there's you can use sponge cake, you can use angel food cake, and you can use pound cake as well. They're all gonna have a little bit different textures to them. I'm sure they'll turn out just fine, but if you can find the lady fingers, it's way better. You can find them on Amazon though, if you need them in a pinch. I do not drink ever, and I do not shop for alcohol ever, but we're to the part for the coffee liqueur. And, um, Kahlua was one that they said that would be a good choice. Bailey's, they said, would be also a good choice. So we're gonna go with the Kahlua because it actually says coffee liqueur on it. Um, a inexpensive bottle of it is gonna be $14.99 or you can get this Cafe Dolce for $12.99. Um, I guess let's just go fancy because, you know, we're not actually purchasing it today, so. 
If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. It's up to you. So that is everything. The only things I'm actually purchasing today are eggs, mascarpone cheese, whipping cream, and lady fingers. So I'm gonna go see what our grand total is for actual money, and then we will calculate all of these ingredients together and see if you needed to buy every single little piece of this recipe, how much you're spending. Welcome, Donnie's customer. If you. Is it gonna go on down? Nope, nothing's on sale today. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have $5.99 twice for the mascarpone cheese. Whipping cream was $2.49. The eggs was $1.39 today. The sugar was gonna be $1.99. Their cocoa, 369. The espresso, 799. Hot darn. And then Ladyfingers, 299. I only bought one pack. Um, the recipe does kind of suggest you get two packs. You're not gonna use all of them though, because the pan that they're wanting you to use, it will fill it out a little bit more. So depending on the size of your pan, you might need a few more than what's in the pack. So it could be $2.99 twice, but I only went with one. Last time I made it, I only needed one pack. So totally fine. And then that Kahlua, $14.99. So that brings us to a grand total of $47.51 for everything in this recipe. She's a pricey gal, but she's worth it. All right, we made it back from the grocery store. I have all of my ingredients laid out as well as all my equipment laid out for us so that we can go through everything that we need to make this recipe. First off, we have all those beautiful ingredients we picked up today. We've got our lady fingers, our mascarpone cheese, our cocoa, our six eggs, whipping cream, coffee, and sugar. Some of the supplies that we're gonna need, you need a nine by nine baking pan. I've got my beautiful 1975 uh, Friendship Birds corningware pan. Love this baby. We've got a little KitchenAid mixer. Hand mixer is just fine. You can use a standing mixer if you've got that too. You don't have to have the hand mixer. We just need some simple measuring cups and a wire whisk. I have my French press here to make some of that strong coffee that we need for the recipe. I feel like the French press does a really good job with it because it's something I can just make it, set it, and just forget it, and it'll make it super strong. Um, and we need a double boiler here, so I've got a little cooking pot, and then one of these glass bowls is for the double boiler. The other one is for all of our egg whites that we're gonna need to take out because we just need the yolks from the eggs. And a little sifter here so that we can use it to dust all the cocoa powder on top of the dish when it's all done. Time to get this started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make up the coffee. It does have to be cold for us to use it, so we're gonna go ahead and get the coffee started boiling now so it has time to cool off in the fridge by the time we need to use it because when we do use it it's one of the last steps in the recipe so I have a cup and a half of water here the recipe only calls for one cup of coffee but I went ahead and made a little bit extra just in case because it is gonna be boiled off into this little pot here and you know steam's gonna get rid of a little bit of that water but also why not have a little extra to drink, right? Who cares? So, got a cup and a half into our little cook pot here. That is gonna go onto the stove to boil up. And once that's boiled up, we're gonna get our French press going. It does need to be very strong coffee, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit more than I normally would use for a full cup of coffee and we're gonna let that sit for as long as we can so it gets nice and strong. Perfect. This coffee is just kind of a regular coffee. It does have a slight flavoring to it, so it's gonna give it a little bit of extra taste, but it's mostly just gonna be like a straight coffee taste. All right, we've got lots of bubbles going, so. Take that off the burner. Into our French press. <laughs> it's very steamy, isn't it? I love the smell of coffee, it smells so good. We're just gonna let that set aside. 
to cook. Now we're moving on to the actual first step of the recipe, making the sabayon. So we need to start by prepping our double boilers. So I'm gonna use the same pot that we just used to make that coffee, and I'm gonna fill it up with a little bit of water and get that boiling. So once that boils up, we're gonna drop it down to a little bit of a simmer, and then we're going to add our double boiler glass bowl on top so that we can start cooking up the sabayon. To make the sabayon, we just need to add our egg yolks into the bowl with our sugar. So we need one cup of sugar. The recipe does suggest you use super fine sugar, so mine's a little bit on the lumpy side. I'm gonna go ahead and sift it in just to be safe see if we can get everything nice and smooth. That looks great. I'm gonna set that aside and separate my egg yolks. This is so fun to do. I don't know what it is about separating egg yolks. It's just like a little science experiment. All right, our water is boiling up quite nicely, so we're gonna drop that down to a simmer. And it is almost ready for the double boiler. No, I got an eggshell! It's all right, I'll deal with it later whenever I cook these up. I did not crack this egg well! <laughs> this is a mess. All right, we're gonna abandon that one. Oh no, there's two eggshells! No! I'm not paying attention. Come here, little eggy. Lost a little yolk, but it's fine. It's mostly there. <laughs> Catastrophe. <laughs> All right, redeem ourselves on the last one. We can do this. Ew. Cradle it. Delicate. A oh, beautiful little baby. Okay. We only broke one, it's fine. Time for the double boiler business. We have our eggs and sugar in these this little bowl here and then our simmering water cooking right here. This just pops right on top of that and then we whisk this bad boy up until it's nice and smooth and thick and creamy. It says it's gonna take about 10 minutes, but we'll see. So what this do double boiler is doing is it's softly, gently cooking the eggs and melting off that sugar so that it blends together and makes a nice, smooth, creamy sauce without turning our eggs into scrambled eggs instead of a nice, beautiful sauce. My arm's already tired and I've only been doing this for two minutes. All right, that is nice and smooth. The bowl isn't super hot, but just in case, throw a little pot holder down. We need to keep stirring this for just a little bit longer so that it helps this cool down a bit more because the next step is to add the mascarpone cheese to it and you don't want that to uh, be too much of a temperature shock together. So we've had our, our mascarpone cheese sitting out since we've got it. So it's dropping down to a reasonably room temperature heat so that whenever it drops into this, it shouldn't be a huge cold shock whenever it drops into this warm sabayon. Oh, my arm's so tired. <sighs> Breathe through it, we can do this. The uh, super fine sugar would have been really nice for this bit because this is still a little bit grainy because those sugar crystals haven't completely dissolved. If it was a super fine sugar, that would be really nice and smooth, but it's really no big deal. The uh, sugar should dissolve a little bit more throughout the process once it's chilling in the fridge and everything. So you won't really notice the difference in texture. 
she's looking nice and creamy. All right, that has been cooled down just a bit. Now I need a cup and a fourth of mascarpone cheese. So we've got a little measuring cup here. Scoop this creamy goodness. Triple C thick. Get that down into there. Now it's leveled off. See how far we need to go yet. Okay, so we just need a little bit more. That was about a cup. So probably just need about a fourth of that. All right, that looks about right, so. In she goes. It's very important that you don't over wick, over mix at this portion because it could curdle the eggs and you really don't want curdled eggs. You want this to be nice and smooth. So we're gonna just combine. All right, that looks pretty smooth. I'm gonna leave it alone. Moving on to the next step, I've got that mixture set aside, but I need to start working on our homemade whipped cream. So I've got some heavy whipping cream here, and this is one pint, and our recipe calls for one and three quarters of a cup. So I basically just need to take one quarter of a cup out of here, and then dump the rest into the bowl and get to whipping. whipping cream and you basically have three stages of whipping cream. You have liquid, you have whipped cream, and you have butter. Once it turns to butter, you can't use it for this anymore. So you just need that middle stage. Also, if you turn your beaters up too high during the liquid stage, it goes everywhere. Not a good plan. It's getting there. It's starting to thicken just enough. I've got my beautiful big 404 bowl here. I don't have quite enough room in this little baby bowl here to mix all of this whipped cream into it. So we're gonna go ahead and put our mixture into the big bowl. And we need to gently fold the whipped cream into this mixture. We just go around the outside, cut through the middle. Around the outside, cut through the middle until we get a nice smooth mix. That goes into the refrigerator to cool while we work on the lady fingers, and then it comes out when it's ready for assembly. This is the best part of the recipe where everything starts to come together. The next step is that we take our lady fingers and dip them into the coffee so that it gets a little bit of a soaking so that we can layer the lady fingers on the bottom as a little crust. And then we put some of that tiramisu cream on top of that, smooth it off, and then another layer of lady fingers, another layer of the tiramisu cream, and then a dusting of the cocoa powder. And she's finished. It's gonna fly right by, I'm very excited. 
We've got our coffee that I have been refrigerating. I've got a little bowl here so that I can dip the lady fingers into the coffee. We've got our lady fingers, of course. Got a little strainer for our coffee. So this tends to leave a lot of coffee grounds. So we're gonna get rid of those with this little baby and then layer them into our beautiful little bowl. If you were using the coffee liqueur, we, you would definitely want to mix the two together at this point. So it calls for a cup of coffee and then a half a cup of the liqueur, but since I omitted the liqueur, I'm just gonna do a cup and a half of coffee into here. I'm not gonna lie to you, these don't taste good on their own. Don't try them, it's not worth it. I risked losing a biscuit last time so that I could just try it and see what it tasted like. They're not good. It's not worth it. I'm very much a sweet, sweet cookie person though. So if you're out there and you like the taste of lady fingers, it's just not my taste. It's fine. So you want to just soak these long enough that they're wet, but they don't get soggy because they'll soak up some of that tiramisu cream as well and get nice and soft while they're uh, in the refrigerator cooling off. So just dip, dip, done. It's already a little bit softer than it was. this onto the top of the lady fingers. And back to more coffee dipping. Okay, I had to make that last little bit work, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's better than having to buy another pack for literally one cookie. Not worth it. She's a little full. <laughs> Goodness. Mayday. Mayday! Okay, it's super, super full. If I touch it, it's gonna spill over. I still have a little bit more of the cream, but I'm definitely not putting it in there because it'll completely spill over. But uh, we got it done. All we have to do is just add a little bit of the cocoa powder on top and make it look nice and pretty, even though she is so full. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Oh well, we're gonna make it work. This is the bit where I bring out my inner Mary Berry, get my little sifter and my little cocoa powder and we just make this baby look beautiful. Also, I just got cream in my hair. What's baking if you don't get it all over yourself, right? Did you even bake? You wouldn't think that cocoa powder makes a difference, but it really does. It's just this like sweet cream with this bitter chocolate. Just mmm. Especially whenever you get into that coffee layer. So good. So she's definitely going to firm up in the fridge. It's a bit soupy right now. A little more soupy than I would have liked it. I probably should have whipped the cream just a little bit more, but uh, I feel like it's gonna be fine. So we're gonna get this baby in the fridge to cool. It suggests that you cool it for at least four hours, if not overnight. So I think, hmm. Okay, I couldn't wait overnight. It's been about five hours and I think it should be solidified enough for some eating. I 
have a little bit of the mixture left. I just kind of wanted to see how much it would thicken since whenever I put it into the refrigerator, it was very soupy, but kind of see, it's pretty thick. So I have a feeling that the uh, tiramisu itself is probably just fine. Oh yeah. No wobble here. Oh, it looks so good. I'm gonna scoop out a serving for me and for Dallas. We're gonna see how it tastes. It's a little messy, but look at it. Oh, you need a fork too. All right, are you ready for this? Is this it? I hope you really like it. I cut you huge pieces. <laughs> so what are we doing? Are we gonna like try it at the same time or are we gonna like? You wanna, you wanna clink? Now you do me. Mm. Is it good? Yeah. All right, watch the mustache. I'm really scared of dropping it all over the floor. Ready? Interesting, what is the foamy stuff? It is ladyfinger cookies. This white stuff is cookies? Oh, the white stuff is, um, I just got it on the floor. <laughs> it's um, whipped cream, a sabayon, and mascarpone cheese. What's the powder on top? Cocoa powder. <laughs> it's good. It's very indulgent. It's it's not too sweet. Mm -hmm. All the ingredients you're telling me about, it sounds like it's gonna be way too sweet. It's not terribly sweet. Well, the like cocoa kind of cuts down on some of the sugar in the cream, but the cream itself really isn't that sweet either. So the powder on top is cocoa powder? Mm-hmm. Like literal hot cocoa powder or? Well, it's baking chocolate powder, so you wouldn't want to throw that in some milk. It wouldn't be very good. What do you think? Ten, one out of ten. You want me to rate it for your YouTube channel? Do it! <laughs> I ain't scared. What, what kind of scale am I rating it on? Um, I mean, up against what? Give me some context. Let's see. If you would compared to your favorite dessert where does this lie <laughs> that's probably not a good idea um well it would be it's up there because i don't eat as much dessert as you do so i don't like things that are super sweet so you know it's 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 not too sweet so i like it a lot but like i also really don't like like puddings and stuff True. This is kind of in the realm of pudding. It doesn't yeah. taste like pudding. If you're thinking about making it, but you don't like pudding, it's fine, but. I don't know, I don't want to rate it. <laughs> I'm going to get torn up in your comments. Would you eat it again? Well, yeah, I'm going to finish this. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to eat it again. Look at all this. <laughs> Anybody who want to come over and eat some? We yeah, have a lot. <laughs> come over so I don't have to eat it. I don't know. Oh. People also don't like my rating methods because you're like against the most wonderful thing in the world is a 10 so if so that means a five is okay yeah most of the dessert you're gonna eat in your life's a five so like this is a six or a seven sweet see but you get my rating scale people are gonna be like she's your girlfriend say it's a 10. say it's a 10. no i find that i find that as a compliment this is it is more than just edible it is you were enjoying it. Well, I'm gonna take this back to my movie and see you. <laughs> Thanks guys, peace out.